Hello, everybody. So it's almost the new year. And today I'm going to be talking about how to head into the new year being the healthiest, most best version of yourself. We're going to talk about how to set intentions, which is a little bit different than New Year's resolutions or setting goals even. It's a little bit um, mystical, magical, uh, if you will. As most of you probably know, I'm born on Halloween, so I love to kind of talk about this stuff. Um, I think it's so important to, you know, again, talk about sort of that layer beyond our physical body and our kind of um, physical everyday life and thinking about how we are connected to the energy of the universe and how we can sort of use that as kind of mindset shifts and sort of guide us and direct us into what we want to achieve. So I'm just going to share my screen. And we'll get right into it, okay. So as I said, this is all about setting new year intentions for your health goals. When we think about the new year, it's really a time for reflection. It really symbolizes a fresh start, you know, a time of renewal, reflecting on the past year and looking forward to a new beginning. Traditionally, New Year's resolutions, which I think is a fun fact, um, were made as promises to the gods that people would return anything that they borrowed and pay their debts. Um, it has since obviously evolved into the practice of really setting goals. Um, and they tend to be more so vague. When people make kind of New Year's resolutions, they sort of say things like, I want to change my life. I want to lose weight. I want to be healthier. Um, I want to work out more, you know, these things that are very sort of vague and give us no real direction. So when we think about the differences of goals versus intentions, goals is really a description of future wants and focuses on external end results. And what intentions are, are the principles and kind of energy that guide us towards how we want to be and focuses on our internal feelings. Intention is what internally fuels our actions. Our goals are the external end results that intention carries us towards. So it's important to have both, of course. If we want to have a goal, we want to have a you know end result of what we want to achieve. But how we get there is really through our intentions. And really what intentions do is they create value. So goals, again, are specific outcomes that you want to do. Something like, I want to run a marathon. I want to lose weight. I want to eat healthier. Intentions are those inner feelings that guide how you want to live and how you want to show up in the world oops, in order to achieve that goal. So that's something like, if you want to run a marathon, is that's your kind of end result goal, your intention will be to move my body more because you can kind of feel that. You can feel the movement of your body. Um, it's something like to embrace change, right? When we think about our goal of wanting to lose weight, we have to embrace change. We have to change our body. There's a whole cycle of change that occurs when we want to achieve or in order to achieve that. So that's really the intention is like, I want to embrace change um, to be kinder to myself, right? Eating healthier. I want to eat healthy. Well, what does that really mean? I want to be kinder to myself. I want to show myself uh, more self-compassion. You know, I want to fuel and nourish my body. That's really the intention being that in internal sort of guide of like, okay, this feels good to me. This feels, I feel like I'm being kind to myself because I'm nourishing myself with nutrients. So your intention set the foundation for what you will receive back from the universe. And it creates a deeper sense of presence and purpose in your life. Um, in ancient India, they have this teaching, which I think is really, really cool. Um, and they taught that personal destiny is ultimately determined by your desire, intention, will, and action. So your desire leads to intention, and intention leads to will, 
your will drives your actions in the world and your actions create your fate. So again, it's that cycle of kind of understanding how you are connected to your own personal body, your own personal presence in the world, um, and having that internal guide to get you to where you want to be. So to make changes with intent, again, as I said, New Year's resolutions and New Year's goals really are very vague. And when we try to reach a vague goal, it often feels very empty and we easily become disconnected from it and kind of fall off the wagon. You know, that's when we sort of feel that we're going through the motions, we're not really achieving anything, we're on autopilot, or even we're saying things like, oh, I'm, I'm self-sabotaging, you know, why can't I just do it? Why can't I just do it? Because it's, there's no direction. There's no kind of internal guide. So what intentions do and what making changes with intent, it raises your awareness of how you are choosing to live and show up. Um, it produces clarity. Um, and it's something you can use to recall on during times of wanting to give up during the journey. So this is kind of a big thing. I love to emphasize this and talk about this a lot, especially in my sessions, always having that kind of value-based goal in mind, because when we're in the middle of the journey, when things get hard, when things get tough, which they will, life is not easy. Life always has hills and valleys. You're always going to be going through those things. Um, we want to be able to have something deep within us that we can recall on. And this really, having that intention really shifts your energy um, to, again, the universe, your connection to it, your connection to what you actually want and how you want to be in the world. So how to set intentions? There's these four sort of steps and we'll get into them, but essentially you want to clear your space, call yourself to the present, cultivate your energy and create alignment. This is where it gets a little bit witchy. So bear with me. It's really fun. Um, at least I think in my opinion, but it's something that I think is going to be different for most people when they are trying to, again, create those new year goals of like wanting to be a healthier, better version of themselves. So clearing your space, this is kind of the first step when we think about the process of setting intentions and what does it entail or look like, clearing your space is the first thing that you want to do. So when working, especially with energy, it's important to cleanse our surrounding environment. Um, this can mean, you know, cleaning up, right? Tidying up, folding clothes, um, you know, washing down counters or anything like that. It, it can mean that where it's like you have this, um, you know, physical clear space, but it really is something that, again, is an internal action as well. So really what this does of clearing and cleansing your environment um, that's directly surrounding you when you're going to set these intentions is it makes it kind of a sacred space. Um, you know, so you want to be going somewhere that's calm and peaceful, you know, in a quiet room where, you know, nobody's going to bother you walking outside in nature, something along those lines where you feel at peace and you feel calm. There's not a lot of things going around you. So you can really sort of focus and open up and again, work with that energy. Um, and how to do this or essentially after you Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Essentially, after you cleanse your environment, making sure that it's clean, making sure that it's calm, you really want to envision, and you can do this mentally, you just envision sort of a circle around yourself. Um, circles, when we're, again, working with energy or kind of magic or spells, um, you know, again, you don't have to see it that way. This is really just sort of, you know, practical, universal kind of things. But I think it's fun to, to think of it in, in that way, where it's sort of like casting a circle spell. Um, it, the circle symbolizes, you know, the moon cycles and the cycl cyclical nature of life. There's always a circle everywhere you go, everywhere you see any, anything about life is a circle. So you can do something like draw it in the air, um, you can use boundary items like creating a circle, you know, again, using salt, obviously that's like really witchy, um, but something like putting ribbon around something like putting, you know, yoga blocks in a circle, something that sort of symbolizes that whatever that means to you. Again, it can be anything as long as you 
visualize and you understand that there is a circle around you. And really what this does is kind of signals to the forces of the universe that you're ready. You're ready to be focused. You're ready to be present, present, and you're ready to sort of set those intentions. This is kind of an extra if you're really into witchy stuff, but what you can also do after you sort of create that um, circle of like calm, peace, and readiness, you can sort of call to the four corners of the universe energy. And that's, again, a little bit more elaborate. You don't have to do this step. I just think it's sort of fun. What it really does is kind of helps to orient the, orient the midpoint of, you know, global energies that are all around you in the world, in the universe. Um, you know, thinking of kind of a center of a compass, right? The center of a compass, it draws energy in and it radiates energy out. So that's essentially what you're doing when you're calling on the four corners. And how you do this is that um, you would, or basically what it does is kind of announce your presence, right? So drawing that circle or envisioning that circle is really kind of a signal. But when you're calling the four corners, you're using your voice to sort of say, hey, I'm here. And also to say thank you to, you know, the energies all around you. Sometimes I like to think of, um, you know, again, spirits that might be with you. I often think of my grandmother when I think of this and kind of, I always feel her presence around me. So I think like, you know, I want to say thank you for being here. Thank you for protecting me. And you can sort of announce and say something like hello to the energy of the self powers of fire and feeling, thank you for your protection. And, you know, the different elements have different um, directions. So east is water, west is earth, north is air, south is fire. Again, these, you can change them if you want to. Sometimes people think of, you know, okay, when I'm in my home, when I'm in my home, when I'm sitting in my living room, you know, where is the ocean to me right now in what direction? And they use that direction. Um, but you know, this is the guide that I use. So again, this is an extra tip. It's a little bit more witchy, but I think it really sort of helps to, again, signal and announce your presence that you are serious and you are ready to sort of work with that energy around you. The next step is to call yourself back to the present. What this does is creates a state of self-awareness. So what you wanna do is take deep breaths and invite yourself to be here and now. And you really wanna be self-compassionate with this. Oftentimes people um, struggle with this, struggle to be present, and it really is a practice. It's something that, you know, if you're doing this for the first time, it might feel your mind's racing, your mind's going elsewhere. Um, and all you have to do is gently call yourself back um, and being self-compassionate with that because it's it's not an easy thing, you know? It's something where it's like, we have to practice doing that. Um, one technique that I often like to use, especially if you're feeling that you're having trouble sort of concentrating, if your mind's racing, if you're thinking of a lot of other things and you're feeling that you're unable to kind of um, anchor yourself in the present moment, doing something like progression, uh, re relaxation techniques. And really what this is, is you sort of, you know, whether you're sitting, whether you're standing, laying down anything, um, what you want to do is tense each individual muscle group, um, you know, hold it for five to 10 seconds, focus on what that feels like, and then let the muscle go and then notice the contrasting feelings. So it's like, you know, example, you can flex your bicep, you can hold it for five seconds, release it notice the contracts contrasting feelings because that allows you to say okay this is what tense feels like this is what relaxation feels like you know it kind of just again gives you that self-awareness so that's a technique that you can use to sort of call yourself back into that now present moment i'm here other things you could do something like you know touching your body touching sort of physical things around you um that can be help sensory based and what being in the present moment when we're trying to set our intention helps us to get clear about what we truly want out of life. So this is where it starts. This is where we talk about our desires. So questions you can ask yourself here is what matters to me? What makes me feel the most fulfilled? What are my values? What are my beliefs? How would it feel to embody my desires and what would it look like? Um, you can all, you can journal this, you can say it out loud, you can talk, you can talk into a recorder because this is really where, when we're setting our intentions, we have to be clear about what we want. So saying something like, I want to lose weight 
is not clear. It's not, it's very vague. So there's no direction for you to kind of lean on. So when you're kind of getting deep into the nitty gritty and it can take you a little while, um, you know, you might have to do this multiple times. Um, but the idea is that you want to get really clear about what really matters to you in your life. What do you absolutely desire? And this builds that foundation of self-connection. So we can't get what we want if we don't know what we want, right? So if we don't really know, then how can we achieve something? How can we go in a direction when we're just saying, oh, I just want to go out, right? That's like getting in your car. It's like, I just want to go out. It's like, well, do you want to go to the grocery store? Do you want to go to the mall? Do you want to go you know, to DSW to get shoes? Like, where? what do you want to do, you know? Um, and these are journal prompts. I can, um, you know, you can pause, write them down. I can uh, put them in the Facebook group as well to help you get clear on your intentions of what you truly want. So you don't have to, again, answer all of these. Um, these are just examples of questions. You can sort of write anything that you want, but these are, this is a practice to sort of help you get to that clarity state of like, okay, what's really important to me? And you can start from there saying, okay, I want to lose weight. What does that mean? What is, how does that matter to me? What is that, how in, in what ways does that make me fulfilled? What does that look like? What are my beliefs around that? What are my values? What's my personal history with that? What's my connection? How can I take care of myself more? How can I nourish my body more? What do I want more of in my life? You know, what am I struggling with? So these are things to, again, give you that clarity, give you that process of sort of understanding what that true baseline foundation is of what you want. And the next thing that you're going to do is cultivate your energy. And what this means is you're going to want to notice, especially as you're doing this practice of as you're either journaling, as you're sitting, reflecting, as you're talking to yourself, um, what energetic state are you in when you are asking or getting to the root of your desire? What, what does it feel like to you? What do you, where in your body do you notice it? You can do something like that. Like, Hey, I notice it in my stomach. I, I notice it in my heart. I know sometimes it's like, I notice it in my arms, my upper body. Um, that again, just helps you to sort of cultivate what that energy looks like, what that energy feels like. And this is especially important when we're saying, okay, Hey, I want that. I want to do this. This is my true deep desire of how I want to be, how I want to show up in the world, what I want to be like. Um, it helps us to understand, okay, I know what that feels like. And it's going to help you to like put a name to it. And that helps you to identify and understand. Um, so now that you know what you want, right? You created that clarity and you ask yourself how you are currently matching that with your energy. So reflect, these are questions that you can use, again, journaling, saying out loud to yourself, just in your mind, self-talk. You wanna reflect upon how am I currently contributing to the reality I desire inwardly and outwardly? What am I actually doing? What energies do I need to release to achieve my intentions. This is a huge one. Oftentimes when we're, you know, trying to make health goals, there's a lot of things that we need to let go of. A lot of limiting beliefs, a lot of um, pain, a lot of trauma, a lot of energies that are built up within us that we believe that we can't do it. You know, those are things we need to release. So it's going to be helpful for you to think about what do I need to get rid of? And what energies do I want to have? What do I want to embody? What do I want to um, resemble? How do I want to act? How do I want to feel? And what do I need to do to integrate that? What does it look like to be that person that I have in my mind? And again, this is a process and you're, want, and you're going to want to actively choose nourishing, compassionate, kind thoughts and attitudes, beliefs that support your intentions. Oftentimes when we're thinking about these things, like, hey, how am I, what am I doing right now? What are my actions? We tend to have a negative um, self-talk where we sort of kind of beat ourselves down. It's like, I'm not doing enough. I'm not being enough, or I'm doing this wrong. I'm failing. I'm not living up. And it's natural and normal to have those type of thoughts. But what you want to do, like, you're not going to stop them from happening. What you want to do is don't accept them. 
let them pass through your brain and accept the things that are kind, accept the things that are compassionate and accept what is going to nourish your intentions. And this is just a diagram um, that I took from uh, Susan Davis, uh, David. She's made this book called Emotional Agility. She's awesome. Um, but this, these are kind of terms that you can use to help identify that energy or those feelings when you're kind of going through this process. So instead of saying, okay, I feel sad, right? That's just an umbrella term. Sad is an umbrella term. What do you actually feel? Do you feel disappointed? Do you feel um, you know, disillusioned? Do you feel regretful? Do you feel tearful? Or if you say, I feel embarrassed, it's like, well, is that self-conscious? Do you feel inferior? Do you feel less than? Do you feel ashamed? Um, so again, these are things that take a step further of really helping you identify what that energy that you're feeling um, when you're going through this process of like getting that clarity, setting those intentions, um, you know, opening up your space. It's going to have a lot of feelings. You're going to want to tap into what these mean to you and really get down to like, what exactly am I feeling and what does that look like? Putting a name to it. And these are helpful terms that you can use. And the last step is that you want to create alignment. So again, you establish what you desire. You've got that clarity. You feel what energy it matches. You know what it feels like. You know what it looks like to you. You can feel it in your body. You can feel what it makes you feel when you think about it. And now you put it into action. So essentially aligned actions are your intentions in motion. So that's the reality. That's This is where we take, you know, the universe, the energy, the magical, witchy, mysterious kind of things that we're talking about, and we put it into real life. So you want to spend your energy on actions that bring you closer to your intentions. And you can check in daily with yourself by asking, does what I'm thinking or doing align with my desire? Is this going to help me get to where I want to be? So if we want to say, I want to you know, achieve a healthy weight, and we're beating ourselves up every day and we're putting this pressure on ourselves and we're being mean and unkind and you know not supporting ourselves is that really going to get us to that goal or is that going to get us further away from that goal that's not really aligning those thought that thought pattern is not really aligning with what we desire we desire to be kind to ourselves we desire to nourish our body we desire to live a long happy healthy life and is thinking negatively is beating ourselves up. Is that working? Is that aligned with what I truly want to be or the person that I truly want to be in this life? Um, and again, having these intentions is really your guide as a point of awareness by which everything else becomes a contrast. This is my favorite, favorite thing. And this is really what makes setting intentions special because again, it gives us that point of awareness. So we can say, yes, this is helping me or no, this is hurting me. Everything else becomes contrast. So you can sort of use that as a way to compare how you're doing, how you're feeling, and is it guiding you in the right direction? And as I emphasize, it's a practice, it's a process. So gently bring yourself back to the present and realign as many times as you need to. This is not a one and done. This is an everyday kind of thing. You can do it formally once and have it written down. And then, you know, again, you don't have to sort of set up that every single time. You can do, you know, something that as long as you mentally feel that um, or understand that presence of like you, you working with your own energy, you can kind of do those daily journal prompts, those daily asking yourself questions and checking in with yourself. Um, and it's very normal that like when we feel that we have strayed at all throughout the journey, just bring yourself back to the present, you know, use these tactics, tense up your muscles, use the progression relaxation techniques of like creating that awareness of like, okay, let's, what does this energy feel like? And how is it guiding me and realign you made, you know, you took a step left and you wanted to take a step, right? Call yourself back realign. It's that simple. Because the more conscious you are of your intentions, the easier it becomes. Um, and again, intentions are flowing. As I said, this is really an everyday type of practice. Repeat the process of creating awareness, um, you know, calling on the energies, clearing your space, um, and putting your aligned actions into play. 
whenever you feel called to and do, do it in a way that feels right to you. Again, this is not something that you have to do step by step. This is not rigid. It's very much a personal internal thing. And this is what's going to make the difference in creating vague goals or things that you want to achieve versus actually living your life in a way that's going to get you to achieve those. So again, have fun with it. It's supposed to be kind of, um, you know, a very personal thing. So do it in a way that makes you feel special and makes you feel happy and healthy. Because again, at the end of the day, it's really what's the most important piece. I like to sort of think of myself as like, okay, I'm creating a spell. I'm casting a circle. I'm calling the energy just because I think it's a fun process. And it is something that helps me get to that point of understanding the present and the now moment and tapping into how those energies feel. And I use this as a guide. So whenever things pop up in everyday life, I can say, okay, does this action align with what I truly want? Because I'm very clear about what that intention is. So again, I hope you guys have fun with this. Um, and I hope you have a healthy and happy new year. Bye.